I will go back to 1919. My father was no prophet. He was not a man of the world, living in a small little island in the West Indies. And around the table, I can hear him vividly now. He was a ship chandler and supplied the ships with all of their needs, especially groceries. And so he, he sat this day at the table and he said to his mother, that is to my mother, his wife, and to all of us, there'll be another war in 20 years. Now that's 1919, the boys were coming home from Europe after the First World War. And mother said to him, Joseph, why do you say that? Look at our sons. They'll all be just ripe for a war, a war if it's going to happen in another 20 years. He said it would take place in another 20 years, and he even named the opponents. He named Germany, Italy, and Japan. Japan was not in the last, in the First World War, and Italy was not on the side of Germany. It was on the side of the Allies. He named these three. He got it from the captains, and he got it from the stewards, and he got it from the officers of the ships that he supplied. And he believed what they said, and he simply expressed what he heard. But he heard it, and he believed it. Well, the war broke exactly 20 years later, on the 1st of September, 1939, when England declared war on Germany as Germany moved into Poland. Now here, that's no prophecy, it's simply that these words are coming to pass. A simple little man in a little island unknown to the world, and he is voicing something. He was not alone because he was only giving voice to those things said to him aboard the ships. And that's how man thought. And today man is thinking in the same way. Misusing his one talent, which is his speech and his mind. We could start now to counteract all the nonsense in the papers and all the nonsense on TV and radio by simply assuming that you are what you would like to be, ignoring everything that would oppose it and dare to assume it to the point of self-conviction that you believe it. <clears throat> and do you know it will come to pass? For this is the coin of heaven. One morning back in 1954, I think it was, my wife awoke from this deep, deep sleep with an audio vision for the voice is speaking from the depths of her own self and speaking to her. And these are the words. You must stop spending your thoughts, your time, and your money. Everything in life must be an investment. She came rushing into the living room to the library, and there she took the dictionary out to see the difference in meaning between the words spending and investing. And the difference was to spend is to lay out without hope of return, while to invest is to expect return on equity. One is to not expect anything on what you do, and the other is to expect a return on equity. But they mentioned three things you also have time that you must invest, not spend. Your thoughts must be invested and not spent. And your money, invested and not spent. So you must stop spending your thoughts, your time and your money. Everything in life must be an investment. Now she wrote those words for me back in 1954, I think it was. It's a vision. A perfect vision for everyone to take hold of and apply it. So I know what to do, but am I doing it? You read the morning paper, and then you are disturbed, and you do not know the characters spoken of, but you're disturbed by the things read. And then you react, and you're wasting your thoughts, your time, at that moment. They may even force you to go out and do something concerning the money that you have. Someone is putting on pressure to get you to invest in a certain thing, and it's not an investment at all. It is a waste. But at least you have control over your thought and over your time. If I give my time to reading the idle paper or some little trivia that someone suggests that I should read, or will I take it into the book called The Word of God and read God's Word? 
and take the word as I did today. I took the word way. And then, as I took the word way, and it leads you into tread. Now listen to the word tread. The same meaning, the same word. It's Derek. Wherever the sole of your foot shall tread, I have given you. Can you imagine such a fantastic gift? Wherever the sole of your foot shall tread, I have given to you. In the first chapter, the third verse of Joshua. I don't care what it is. Well, now the same word tread is conversation. So I'm treading out the wine press as I sit alone and carry on my conversations. And whatever I am actually doing in my conversation, I'm treading out. That's the wine press. And what am I treading? The bitter wine or the sweet wine? It's entirely up to me. Wherever the sole of your foot shall tread, that I have given to you. It's done for me. So I can sit down and bring you into my mind's eye and simply tread it. Have you tell me what physically you haven't told me, but I wish you had told me, and you would like to tell me, and simply carry on a conversation, which is the dialogue. I hear you tell me, and I rejoice in what you tell me, and then I congratulate you in what you have told me, or do I believe it? That is investing my time. That's investing my thought. And it works that way.